Hey everybody, this is Rob Tiffany with your IoT Minute. Uh, today I'm just going to reflect a little bit on uh, questions I get all the time around IoT from people. And I'm going to boil it down to just something really simple. Why IoT? Uh, I know I keep having to answer this all the time to folks, and that's fine. Uh, but lots of people don't understand why do I need IoT? What's the point? Um, there are no shortage of IoT players out there from device makers to wireless carriers and technologies to platforms to analytics to visualizations to things like that and they're all they're all playing there but we're still waiting for the big bang to really happen and a lot of people are saying wow you know is it really worth it why tell me again why I'm doing this so let's get down to brass tacks here why IOT remember again what is it all about if all of a sudden, you know, I can know everything about everything, all, all my machines, all my things, and everything that's in my enterprise, and my company, my organization, uh, my smart city, the world around me, what could I do with all that information if, if I instantly could know the state of all those things, the whether it's healthy or unhealthy or nearing failure, whatever, you know, that's, that's kind of the beginning of, of IoT, you know? We've had the internet of people for quite a long time, and I think we all get that. Um, you know, thanks to the World Wide Web, you know, starting in the early 90s, you know, we got people on the internet via web browsers, uh, and then that they it's caused a revolution. People can interact with each other, they can do e-commerce, they can find out the state of things in city governments, or the state of what does something cost on Amazon, I wanna buy it, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, to make their lives easier, uh, to be to add efficiencies, uh, and then when we got mobile devices, you know, all of a sudden the internet of people got mobile, and all of a sudden your internet connectivity was with your smartphones, and you could find the state of all kinds of stuff and communicate with people everywhere, uh, and do lots of things, and it's it's all good. It's been a revolution. So doing the same thing, but with things, right? light bulbs, the cars, all the sensors that you see po lights popping up on your car, factories, machines, things like that, uh, valves, gauges, uh, you know, it just goes on and on. If you could, in the same way we've all been able to check a web browser on our laptop or look at our smartphone and know something and be able to take action on it, how does that change with things, with machines? Well, just knowing right away uh, and that state of those things lets you react to it. And, and I know reacting doesn't seem as cool as being proactive, but it's a start because most people aren't doing that. You know, I know we all live in this big IoT echo chamber where everybody's on the internet talking about how we're all doing AI and deep learning and all that stuff. But the reality is most companies, most organizations, most cities that want to be smart, they're not even connected yet. They're just not even there yet. There's a lot of talk about something we want to do in the future. We talk like it's today, but it's just not true. So getting things connected is still the first priority today. It, believe it or not, it still is. So connecting to those smart things and getting the state information from them, you know, easily. We already know how to do that with the web, right? We send data over something called HTTP. Uh, and we secure it with SSL, TLS these days. Uh, and then we get that data and then we know something, right? And then you can act on it. Same thing with machines. Now, older machines, you know, they use older or industrial machines use all kinds of weird protocols and stuff that are hard to understand. So you have to sometimes have edge kind of gateway-ish devices nearby to, and do, do a little software work translating those to a format that we understand. You know, on the web, we all understand I say all, <laughs> something called JSON, JavaScript object, not object notation, uh, or XML, or things like that, stuff that's readable by humans. Um, once we get those kind of things from machines and know from machines in the same way I know things from my web browser about the status of my nuclear reactor because there's red and yellow and green lights showing me on a panel in my browser or something like that, well, machines can take action on those things as well now. So knowing is huge. It's it's the first baby step. So you connect, you start collecting that data, and you start knowing. We haven't done anything fancy yet, and you're probably still wondering, was this still worth it? I'm still back to the question, why IoT? Well, once you get that going, then you can start layering on analytics to it. And I'm talking simple things to take actions on behalf of you. You know, so... 
I've talked to you in the past about a lot of low-hanging fruit around IoT to get value. Uh, just basic remote monitoring, kind of just knowing something. Right now, all over the world, in factories and cities and plants and submarines and ships and airplanes, people are walking around doing physical inspections of stuff and looking at things and writing down logs and looking at gauges and doing testings. You know, testing bridges for cracks, you know, did the last earthquake do us in? You know, think of all the city workers that are doing stuff like that. This stuff is all around us. So imagine if you had sensors that could tell you those things and using the power of wireless, which we got all around us, uh, send that data so that you know remotely and you don't have to send people to do those things. You don't have to take the time to do those things and you don't have to introduce human error into those things. This gives you an instant cost savings in labor this gives you a savings because you're going to have accuracy. You know, you don't have to worry about potential human error in interpreting data out there and writing stuff down. I do still people see people all over the world going out in the field and writing stuff down and then going back to the office and transcribing it wrong, you know, or doing Excel. Don't feel bad if your company runs on Excel. Um, so knowing that data, you know, saving labor, getting accuracy, and also speed. You get the data now, and you know it all the time. Um, and then you can, and then when you, then you can just layer on the most simple analytics on top of that data that you know now uh, to take action automatically where possible or to dispatch somebody. Um, those are just the baby steps, you know, and then, you know, and then if you apply this to a factory or equipment or a car or a bullet train or whatever, People talk about wanting to reduce unplanned downtime, you know, things that fail, things that break. Well, the reason we do inspections uh, all the time is because we're trying to do preventative maintenance and get ahead of those things. Well, if the sensors are doing that stuff for us, uh, and then we know it all the time, we don't know, just find out at the interval when we go check, then we can do things in real time. So even if I can't predict the future, if I detect that a subsystem and in a piece of equipment is one of its components is failing. And, and I know that that can have a cascading effect to have the whole thing fail. Uh, I can act on it right away uh, and, and take care of that and reduce that unplanned downtime, maybe even prevent it, even without future looking things like machine learning or deep learning or things like that. You can absolutely get in front of that um, pretty simply. Uh, I can't overstate how many things can be avoided, bad things, with just simple, simple, simple analytics and just knowing. Um, anyway, a lot of rambling here on the why of IoT. I'm hoping you're getting the sense of it across the board. Just knowing, being able to take quick actions, even with the most simple data, can be revolutionary compared to we are where we are now. Um, all these things will save you money. They will create a better experience. If things don't go down, then your customers are happy, your supply chain's not disrupted, uh, your distributors are happy, uh, everything's working as it should. If it's a smart city, you're, all your citizens are getting the services they expect. Um, so anyway, easy baby step. The key thing, though, on this why and getting all this stuff is to make sure that all these components are low cost. Because remember, if any one of these components or all of them put together to build an IoT solution, exceed the value of what you're doing, then maybe it's not worth doing. So sensors have to be just super simple, cheap. They need to either have their own power source, if they're in a building somewhere where they can get that to be, be activated, uh, or they need to be able to live on batteries for years and years so that you don't have to roll a truck and go service them. Because when you roll a truck and have to go visit something, you're killing the ROI of your whole solution which goes back to my earlier point, is it worth doing? Uh, so things like that, wireless, uh, you know, or if you're in a building or something, you got wired ethernet, it's probably no big deal. Or you got Wi-Fi, you can just use what's there. If you're out and about, out in the field, you, you know, you might want to use cellular. If you want to save battery life, you might want to use these new narrowband technologies uh, like LoRaWAN or Sigfox uh, or NB-IoT or things like that that you're seeing with LTE. They use a lot less power to help your thing stay on a battery for five years, 10 years. So you don't have to go visit all the time. Uh, getting that data back, you need to filter the heck out of it. Most of that stuff is noise. You don't wanna blow all your money on just 
exploding storage costs, you know, where it just gets out of control and you don't know what to do with all the data you're collecting uh, as you look for a needle and a stack of needles. Um, so you've got to have filtering right out there at the edge to make sure you're only getting important stuff, changed stuff as it's coming so that your data set is a lot smarter. Uh, and then automate as many things as possible with software, taking actions, doing if this, then that, uh, having, you know, triggering things based on KPIs and thresholds. Again, real simple stuff. This all predates doing machine learning, AI, deep learning, all that stuff. Tons of value. If you keep your costs low on all those pillars, uh, be able to remotely update software and firmware patches to edge devices, you know, things like that without having to send someone out there. That's good. You don't want to eat into your ROI. You need to be able to do that remotely, keep things secure remotely. Uh, anyway, lots of information there. It's easy to see all the outcomes with this stuff. Luckily, we got HTML5 uh, in browsers or apps or web on the on your smartphones or tablets. Uh, it's a great way to display outcomes of things. Um, anyway, don't overthink IoT is my big thing. Has always has been. I know people think it's a bigger deal, you know, and it's hard or it's some kind of massive disruptive thing that they can't understand. It really isn't. It's simple. It's still just data. It's still just getting state of data from one thing and moving it somewhere else and doing something with it. So anyway, if you can do that, you're all in. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed this little bit of why IoT. Uh, again, that's an ongoing journey and we can drill into every kind of use case you can imagine and say, why do this? Uh, and, and answer that for you. And I probably will. Uh, anyway, have a good day. I'm out.